Alright, next thing we're going to draw is the three medians of a triangle. Three medians, and they meet at a point called the centroid. So once again, I have a triangle ready to go here. This is obviously an obtuse triangle. And it actually is not going to matter on this one, whether it's acute or obtuse or a right triangle like it did for a circumcenter. Right? But uh, a median, first off, you need to define a median. Okay? You may be familiar with the word median from a road or something like that. You may be familiar with the word median from statistics, like a mean, median, mode. For statistics, the median was the number in the middle when you put all your numbers in order. In a road, the median is the middle part of the road. So we got lanes going both ways and our median is in the middle. And that, that's really what the idea here is still. The median is in the middle. So, kind of like a mid-segment, it's going to start at the midpoint of one side of a triangle, but a mid-segment traveled to another midpoint. Okay, a median's not going to do that. A median's going to start at a midpoint of one side and it's going to go to the opposite vertex. It's going to start at this midpoint down here, and it's going to go to the opposite vertex up here. You can start at this midpoint here and travel to this opposite vertex here. So median is a segment that starts at the midpoint of one side of a triangle, and it travels to the opposite vertex to find the midpoint. Once again, we're going to do perpendicular bisector compass work, so make sure this is open more than half. I'm going to draw my football again, just like we did for a mid-segment. Okay, so, first arc, second arc, and you might notice that these didn't intersect because I didn't draw the first arc long enough. That happens sometimes. So all we need to do is go back to our first endpoint and draw that arc just a little bit longer. We haven't changed our compass length at all, so it's not going to be a problem. And now, once again, just like when we did with mid-segments, we do not need to draw the whole perpendicular bisector. So all we need to do is line this up with this on our ruler, our straight edge, we just draw a little mark again, and this point right here is the midpoint. So now, remember, a median goes from a midpoint to the opposite vertex. So we're going to line this vertex up with this down here, and we're going to draw that long segment, and that is a median. Okay. It splits this side in half, but not perpendicularly, obviously. It may or may not cut this angle in half. It does not have to do that. A median is not necessarily an angle bisector. Now let's go to a second side. So I've got this side here. My compass looks like it's probably open wide enough. It might be, might want to open a tiny bit wider. Here we go. First arc. Second arc, line my ruler up with these two again, okay, remember I don't need to draw the whole thing, just draw a little mark, that little point right there, All right, that point is called the midpoint, we're going to connect it back to the opposite vertex, so once again I'm going to connect back over to here, so from here over to here, that lined up and draw that nice long median. I see they, I see them intersecting right here. Okay. And finally, I need to do my third side. Now, if we obviously did these two sides correctly, I should not need to do the third side. But sometimes we make a mistake. Doing that third one will help. You'll notice that if you do it wrong and you do all three, you'll end up with a little triangle formed in the middle here. If you do it correctly, you'll have a single point there. So it's always good to do the third one just to make sure that you've done everything correctly. So, got my compass open more than half, make a nice long arc. Got my other endpoint, make a nice long arc. Sometimes this gets a little confusing again. You've got multiple points of intersection going on. I've got one here, doesn't really matter. Uh, here I have one, I follow these two until they meet again. That's my second point of intersection. I'm going to connect them. Now you notice it doesn't look like it's gonna go through there, but that, that's not what we're aiming for because we're not drawing the whole perpendicular bisector again. We're just drawing a little mark again, remember? Just drawing a little mark. We're going to connect from my midpoint back to my vertex. Do not line this end of the mark up with your vertex. You'll get things wrong if you do that. You always want to line your midpoint up with your vertex. So you'll see I'm lining my midpoint up, not the end point there. Got that. Got this lined up. Got that lined up. And I'm going to draw that. And 
they intersect at a single point, so I know I did it right again. I'll mark that point a little bit darker for you. So that is a centroid. Okay. Now you'll notice that even though I had an obtuse triangle, the centroid was inside the triangle. Okay. Doesn't matter what kind of triangle you have. Obtuse, acute, right, centroid is always inside the triangle, unlike what we saw with a circumcenter, if you've already watched that video. If you haven't watched that video yet, you'll notice that on a circumcenter, the circumcenter may be inside or outside a triangle, depending on what kind of triangle we have. So, centroid, always inside a triangle. A couple other interesting things. It is the balancing point of the triangle. If you were to cut this triangle out, like on a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood or something like that, and you were to put you know, the tip of your compass or something small, the tip of a pen or a pencil right there on that dot, this triangle would perfectly balance on that point. All right? Those of you who've seen that bird in my classroom that balances on its beak, that has the idea of a centroid as well. Obviously it's not a triangle, but that, the, the beak of that bird is the centroid, and that's why that bird balances the way it does. A couple other interesting things, there is a ratio for distances from the centroid to the midpoint and from the centroid to the vertex. This is one-third of the whole median, this is two-thirds of the whole median, and obviously the whole median gives three-thirds. Right? So if this is four, this would be eight. One-third, two-thirds is is doubled, so 4 to 8 is doubled, and then the whole thing 4 plus 8 is 12. 4 is 1 third of 12, 8 is 2 thirds of 12, so this would be 12. If, if we looked at it a different way, if I told you the whole distance was 21, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 14 for the 2 thirds part, 7 for the 1 thirds, 14 for the 2 thirds, 7 plus 14 gives us 21. So we start with a small, we can double it to get the big part and add them to get the whole thing. If we start with the whole thing, we can divide by three to get the small part, double that to get the large part. Now what happens if we start with the large part? Okay, remember this is two thirds and this is one third. To get from two thirds down to one third, we can divide by two. So let's say that this right here is 12. Okay, well 12 divided by two is six, and 12 plus six, the whole thing, would be 18. Well, that makes sense because six is one third of 18. Okay, so coming back to a centroid, what do you need to know about a centroid? It's the one point where the three medians meet. It's always inside the triangle, no matter what kind of triangle we have. And it has the special one-third, two-third ratio. One-third goes from the centroid to the midpoint. Two-thirds goes from the centroid to the vertex. And then obviously three-thirds for the whole median.